every project needs fuel and this is going to be mine a little pac-man red bull let's hope it helps so if you wanted to stop right here no one would blame you no one would say anything and it would still be mission accomplished but that's not me All right, as with anything, it is good to have a plan, and my plan is to use all the existing buttons. Uh, I'm not gonna be adding any more buttons. I'm going to see what we can do with just what we have here. Uh, there's a good chance that these joysticks are gonna have to be replaced, so we will have to replace the joysticks, and we will have to put a control module for the LCD screen. But the goal is to minimize any type of cutting, drilling, wiring, and let's just see what the absolute minimum steps are to get this Raspberry Pi functioning in this cabinet. All right, everyone, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work on getting the ability to put an HDMI signal into the LCD screen that's built into the one up. Uh, I am following the directions from ETA Prime's video uh, to the T. I actually ordered his board that he had linked in the description of his video, so I'll put ETA Prime's uh, video in my description so that he can get the credit that he deserves for sourcing this board so that we can get an HDMI signal from the Pi and into the cabinet. Uh, it does come with this looks like some form of a, a power regulator daughter board. Uh, we're not going to need that so I'm just going to go ahead and remove it so it does not confuse us. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to work on getting this LCD control board installed so that we can put an HDMI signal into the screen. All right, step one's pretty obvious. We are just going to take the screws uh, from this side, pull the control board. Their control board also has the emulator for the game and the control for the LCD monitor. All right, it's time to assemble the board. Uh, like I said, this is pretty straightforward. Um, really just gonna be following the uh, instructions from uh, ETA Prime's video. No need to reinvent the wheel here. And uh, this, is, this is actually pretty straightforward. We are gonna have to put a ground right here. So let's go ahead and get this grounded. So we have our ground installed. You will have to source uh, this little nut or bolt or however you want to uh, do the grounding to the board as it doesn't come with one. The rest is just hooking up the board. Pretty straightforward. Now we're not gonna mount this just yet. We're actually gonna do a quick test and see if we can get a signal to that screen. All right, everyone, let's get this hooked up. Um, if you hear any crazy noises, the kids are downstairs playing Minecraft, so potential for a uh, UFC match to break out that I'll have to go and referee. So for now, these are all temporary hookup connections just to make sure we've got the LCD screen working. Not even gonna do any audio. One thing to mention, if I didn't mention it before, is that the power supply that comes with the unit can also uh, be used with this board. So you don't need to source another power supply. And it looks like we have success. So there we go. We've successfully installed the uh, LCD controller and we've got what appears to be the picture from the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna take that as a win. We'll take everything apart and we'll keep assembling. Uh, I do wanna take the time to say, please check out our NOLA Fam Arcade channel. We are a family channel that loves claw machines, arcade games, and carnival games. We also go on fun family adventures. So check us out if you like what you see hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon. So up until this point, we've pretty much been using the direction step-by-step step from ETA Prime's video, but this is where we are going to go in a very different direction. Uh, our goal is to use as minimal steps to get this process done. So I'm not gonna replace any buttons. Uh, I'm not gonna be drilling any holes and adding any new buttons we're gonna see how we can function uh, without adding any new buttons. 
The other thing is we are going to see about reusing the existing joysticks. However, um, those joysticks are garbage and it's probably best that we just replace them anyway. So the goal of this is the only amount of replacement that we'll have to do here is the joysticks and two USB encoder boards to send the signals to the Raspberry Pi. So guys, what you see here is the control board has been taken out and flipped over. Um, in the upper right hand corner, you'll notice two boards. Those are actually the USB encoders that I'm going to be installing. Um, one of the things I want to point out is I will not be using the speaker. I will actually be plugging the speakers directly into that LCD control panel. It actually has an audio out jack um, that picks up from the HDMI cable picks up the audio from the HDMI cable so I'll be plugging uh, amplified powered speakers just regular computer speakers into it it's gonna make the audio solution extremely simple uh, I, the the purpose of taking the speaker out is not only am I not going to be using it but I because the speakers are gonna be inside the cabinet I want to use those speaker holes to allow the sound to come out you'll notice that there is a board at the upper center to the left of the two USB encoders that I'm going to be installing that is going to come out uh, we're not going to need that and we're also not going to be using uh, the joysticks uh, we are going to be replacing those with uh, some better joysticks I will have links to all the things that I've purchased uh, to do this uh, the Amazon links in the description so all we have to do right now is basically remove all the wires from the control board at the center uh, upper center and take the speaker out and remove the joysticks all right so now we're going to have to figure out where we are going to put the usb encoders and I think I think we're gonna have one here and one here. I have a feeling that's how these are going to go. Let's kind of kind of dry fit this all of our buttons here with player one. Actually, I think this is going to be player two because we flipped the sides over. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind. That, uh... Yeah, on my left is player two. And on my right is now player one. So as long as we can get this player two button to here... Let's see if we can do that. So it looks like we will be able to do that. Shouldn't be a problem. We're going to have plenty of room to get all the buttons and wires that need to go to here, right here. So I think we're good, and I don't see any issues with putting the other board over here. So now we just got to put in the new joysticks. So let's see how that's going to happen. So here are our new joysticks. Um, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I ordered the best off of Amazon. Um, I will, you know, put in the description um, what I ordered. I went ahead and ordered a full button kit that came with buttons, joysticks, and the encoders and everything. Even though I know the buttons um, weren't going to work, they weren't going to be compatible uh, with this. But my goal wasn't to replace the buttons, but it was like 3 or $4 difference uh, with or without the buttons. So I went ahead and got the kit that came with all the buttons. It's time for the joysticks. So using the existing screw holes is a no-go. Doesn't line up at all. Going to have to drill new ones. So this has turned out to be the biggest pain of the project so far. Uh, lining these joysticks up, what I basically had to do was to flip the case up, line this up, you know, basically by eyesight, get it centered, push it down, and then mark 
the holes that I want to drill and then drill a pilot hole which by the way I almost made a major major mistake I almost drilled the pilot holes all the way through um, when all you really need to do is just get it started so that you can get uh, the screws back in here but this joystick is on it's on solid so uh, we're ready to move to the next side okay I'm pretty much following the steps of this joystick over here we now have this joystick over here installed uh, drill a very small pilot hole and then use the uh, existing screws um, and put it back in it's really solid it doesn't turn left or right I can't pull it out it's not gonna it's not wiggling so it seems to be lined up and centered and uh, I think we're gonna call the joystick portion of this project done now this has been in my opinion right now <laughs> the biggest pain in the butt not that it was hard it's just that you had to go source you know the right drill bit so with that being said the joysticks are done now we're going to move on to the uh, USB encoders and wiring those up. The main thing here is to make sure that we wire these up exactly the same. So where they're labeled, so you'll see under here where it'll say like punch jab. I'll need to make sure that I put this button on this side on the exact same section over here. So I need to make sure that both these sides, so this is player two on my left, player one on my right are wired, wired up identical. So, let's get started. So those buttons are done. Uh, this extra spot right here is where the USB uh, portion of it goes to plug into the USB side of the Raspberry Pi. So I'm gonna go ahead and install that. Time to do the other side. All right, so that side's wired up. Now all we have to do is wire up the uh, player two and player one buttons. And I think we're gonna have the, the whole wiring section of this portion done. So I think for now, just for now, for a proof of concept, I'm gonna go ahead and flip this over uh, and uh, see if we can't get everything up and working. And then after we've got it all up and working, we'll uh, come back, make it all look nice and neat. Here's where we're at. Uh, we're in the home stretch. We're gonna be wiring everything up right now. It's just a matter of um, plugging in the Raspberry Pi and making sure everything has power. Uh, what I did do is when I had the uh, little drill bit out to drill those pilot holes, I did drill one right here so that I can mount the board. Uh, everything else I just have temporarily set up um, so we can make sure that everything's wired up and working and then after that's done I will come back and permanently mount things where they're going to be now we just got to plug everything up I'm going to be using some powered external speakers so uh, that's my plan for sound so let's get it all wired up see what happens um, my Raspberry Pi case had a little section where you can kind of like snap it on a screw like you're hanging a picture so I put a little screw back there uh, add a little electrical tape uh, just to keep it from moving um, this is not going to be where things are permanently but for a proof of concept uh, for what I'm trying to do now um, it's going to be just fine I've got my HDMI cable going into the LCD controller board I do have to add my power here to the controller board but I also have both USB encoders, um, USB encoder, USB encoder over here. Um, they are going into the Raspberry Pi and then I have a set of external speakers that I'm gonna be using because I just had them and I think they'll be just fine for what I'm trying to do. It has booted into attract mode and so far everything looks and sounds great I think at this point obviously there's no way that these buttons are going to be mapped um, out the out the get-go I'm gonna have to go into retro pie and redo all the buttons but all I'm looking for right now is just to see if it'll take joystick inputs and button input input see if it'll give me some kind of feedback that lets me know that they're working so here we go well that's a good sign oh yeah so joysticks working I, I'm I'm gonna say that everything was wired up everything's powered correctly 
or hearing the sound. I'm gonna hook up a USB keyboard. I'm gonna get everything mapped correctly. And then uh, let's see if we can play some games. Okay, so you remember that part where I said, I'm really not gonna start zip tying things or permanently putting things down because I may have to troubleshoot. Well, that is exactly what happened. Apparently, when I went to go map the buttons, uh, RetroPie was not, it was finding the two game pads, but when I would press the buttons, it would not register the button presses for whatever reason. So I had to do some troubleshooting, ran some apps that they have to see what the inputs are like, and it found out that for whatever reason, this USB controller was sending constant signals, basically spamming um, the board. So I had to figure out why. And one of the things I determined, or what I just decided to try and it worked, was I decided to plug the buttons into a different section on this USB controller board. As you can see here, this is one that works. This is one that I've done. So I've actually went to the bottom of the board, whereas this one is the one I did earlier that is done incorrectly, or I don't know if it's done incorrectly, but it's not gonna work. But you can see I start at the top and come down like in an L shape, whereas I need to start down here and go across. So if I start down here and go across, it'll work, but if I start up here and go down, it will not. So I'll need to rewire this one so that it's more like this one. All right, with the buttons uh, now plugged into the correct spot on the USB controllers, uh, everything worked like a charm. Every button mapped, joysticks work, uh, everything was great. And the, the overall process, it went exactly as it was supposed to once everything was in the right position. Um, I did find one snag though, so uh, I'll, give, I'll, I'll show you. We're going to go into arcade here. As you can see, all the buttons are working, joysticks working, everything's working. But I'm going to go into one of my favorites uh, to show you what I discovered. We're going to do Miss Pac-Man. So what I discovered was we could load the games. Everything's working great. Um, but we have our one player start here. We have all of our buttons here but we're missing one button you see we needed a button to actually add a credit the one player start doesn't add a credit to the game so what I was having to do was to go into each game individually and map a button to basically the credit button right to give me a credit and that works great on Pac-Man and some of the older games but on the fighting games such as Street Fighter and we don't want to go backwards, we don't want to mod a cabinet and not have the game that it came with, I found myself missing a button. I had a start button, had all the punches and kicks, but I had no way to give myself a credit. So I was forced to add extra buttons. As you can see right here, I had to go and add one of these smaller buttons that I had gotten from the kit that I bought that gave me the USB encoders and these joysticks. Now, I don't recommend that kit because these buttons will not replace these the buttons up here. Uh, however, they will work perfectly for what I need for them to do, and that is to give me credits on my games. So... I had wanted to not drill anything up here. I didn't want to touch this deck. Um, the main thing is, I like the deck, I like the layout, it looks great. But also, 1UP Arcade is offering a um, cover to protect this free of charge. So I want to be able to use the protective cover that they're going to be sending me to protect this, uh, to keep the wear and tear down. So I didn't want to modify this. So it looks like what I'm going to have to do, even though I didn't want to do it, and technically I still don't have to do it. I can go in and map, you know, buttons um, individually for each game, but that's that's no fun. The, the, the best way is just to create these buttons down here for the select to be able to add credit. So I will be drilling 
uh, two holes right here and snapping these buttons uh, into those holes. So that was something that I discovered. We could actually just stop here. I mean, we have a fully working cabinet. Everything works great. We got sound working, joysticks working. I mean, this is exactly what I set out to do. But we're not done. We're going to keep going. We are now going to modify the on-off button to actually turn the system on and off. We're still not going to use the volume button. We don't need the volume button because we're using those amplified speakers. But it is going to be nice to turn this on and off from up here. So I'll be posting a link to a uh, blog post of the gentleman who actually shows how to do this. I want to make sure that he gets credit. So the link to how to uh, properly modify this switch will be in the description. So make sure you go and see in detail uh, what he was able to do for the community. All right, with that being said, now that we have a fully functioning cabinet and everything works, we're gonna undo it and do the on off button mod. Now, this particular button mod is gonna require a change to the actual startup of RetroPie. So um, we're actually ha gonna have to go and use a keyboard and exit out to the command line and go make a change in the boot up file. And we need to do this before we attach the button to the Raspberry Pi. To enable the off on switch, you're actually gonna have to modify a file uh, inside of basically the Linux portion of the RetroPie. Um, it, it's not as bad as it sounds. and. That's why I was saying, look, if, if you don't want to plug a keyboard up and you don't want to do this, it's fine. You, you've already won. Um, we're just sharpening the pencil at this point. But to go further, uh, you will need a keyboard. Now, depending on which build of RetroPie you go with, an emulation station, which that's not what this video is about, um, you know, you will need to get to the setup portion of it and go and edit this file. I'm gonna show you a way to do it with a keyboard and the controls that we set up. Basically, the version of Emulation Station that I'm using uh, has a RetroPie setup that can take me to a file manager. Now inside this file manager, I wanna to get to root, which means I have to keep going to the very top so I can find the boot directory. Once I'm inside the boot directory, I'm looking for the config.txt file. And this is where you're going to need the keyboard. You'll notice down here it gives you some commands. You're going to need to hit F4. And if this is the first time you're editing something, it's going to ask you which one you should use. It'll even tell you that Nano is the easiest. Just go with Nano. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to scroll all the way down to the end of this file and you need to put this line at the end. Now I am going to link to Icolus. I think that's the guy who's who's doing this. Um, it's Icolus.org. But I'm going to put the exact link to how to do this in my description. And you will be able to follow this. It's not that bad. Um, but it is something that's a little different if you've never done it before. Now what you'll want to do is you'll want to do uh, can hold down the control and hit O. That'll write it out. And then you'll do control and X and that'll exit you out. And then what you'll want to do is hit F10 to quit. And now that you've added that line into the boot up, uh, that is going to allow the Raspberry Pi to accept the signal from the on off switch. All we really have to do is plug the wire from the on from the off on switch into a particular uh, section of the GPIO on the Raspberry Pi. Now, that in itself is pretty simple, but there's there's two things. Um, number one, 
if you plug it into the wrong section on the Raspberry Pi, you'll fry your Raspberry Pi. So it's extremely important to pay attention to the detail and get it right. So that's why you really need to go to the link that I'm posting on how to do this so that you can see the images and not fry your pie. Hmm. Not fry your pie. I'll go with that. All right. With that being said, the second portion is the off on switch is in the reverse position. So off becomes on and on becomes off. So what we have to do is we have to take the switch apart, rotate it so that it orientates itself correctly to where it needs to be. It's not that big of a deal, but it is something that we need to do before we plug it directly into the pie. We're back underneath um, this console. And like I said, I'm so glad I haven't zip tied and sticky taped everything um, because I've been in and out of this thing several times. However, uh, this one should be fairly easy to find. We really only need to find the on off switch because it's the only one that has two wires. The volume switch has three wires, but like I said, I'm not using the volume switch because I'm using um, powered speakers. And I'm just going to set the volume and leave it at that. There's no need for me to uh, be able to turn the volume either off or soft or loud. Uh, it's just going to be, I'm just going to leave it on freaking loud and, uh, and be happy with it. But we do have to pull this switch out, and to do that we have to take off these screws. Okay, so all the screws are out. The volume control and the on-off switch appear to be kind of attached to one little bracket. So we're going to have, have to get them both off uh, to make that change. Um, probably like the joystick, I expect there's going to be some glue, so we'll probably have to give it a little force. And with that, there we are. So... Apparently, I've got to go find the covers. They seem to have disappeared. Like these, they have probably fallen. You see the little black covers that go over the top of the switches. I'll have to go find those, see where they wound up. Maybe I use a little bit too much force. But nevertheless, uh, the one with the two wires is the one that we're looking at and what we have to do is basically take this and just flip it so here we go so we've actually just all we've done is flip this over to this side so now it's in the right position i've also found the covers uh, that dropped off so we'll be putting those back on uh, but now we have the switch in the right position that we can take this wire plug it into the correct port on the raspberry pi and we'll have a working on off switch so at this point, you just need to make sure that you hook the cable coming from the on-off switch to the proper pinout on the Raspberry Pi. Um, it's actually not that complicated, but if you get it wrong, you will toast your Pi. Your Pi will be dead. I wanted to say fry your Pi, but we did that earlier in the video, so that's the best I could come up with. Basically, if the ports are pointing down, so the USB ports... Um, are facing directly down with the pinouts on your right. It's going to be the third one from the top and you're going to want the red wire on the right side and the black wire on the left side. So on this diagram it would be GPIO3 and that's what you would plug the wire from the on off switch into. Alright so basically emulation station is running we can see, let's see here, everything looks really good. Um, so let's hit the button and see what happens. And there we go. The pie is shutting down. Well, that's, that's half of the equation, right? We still have to switch it to on and see if it'll come back on. As 
So now, let's flip it on, see what happens. And there we go. All right, everyone, I think that is pretty much going to put an end to this video. Uh, the rest that's left is pretty much just cable management. Uh, I do want to point out one thing. I did go ahead and plug my powered speakers directly into the audio out of the LCD control board. I did not plug it into the Raspberry Pi. Plugging into the LCD control board was just super simple, and it worked like a charm. So there was no need to plug it into the Pi. Uh, with that being said, man, I, I'm just really, really happy um, with the way things turned out. I have all my functioning buttons here uh, that came with it originally. Did have to replace the joysticks, but that's okay. Uh, I didn't have to modify this top deck at all. And like I said, that was my main goal. They are gonna be sending me a protector uh, for this top deck, so I wanted to make sure that the button layout stayed the same. I did have to drill some holes down at the bottom and add a select and some extra buttons, um, but overall that was no big deal. I, I'm ecstatic. I am ecstatic and very, very happy.